Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. And today, we're going to start off by taking a look at that blizzard that's going through the Midwest right now. It's going to eventually affect the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley region all the way into the Northeast. So we're going to take a look at the impacts from that. And then we have to talk about a follow-up storm, a potentially major snowstorm coming this Sunday. And then, of course, we have to briefly look at those medium to long-range models, which are still signaling towards an extremely active pattern and an Arctic blast coming down from Canada. I really feel like things are about to get super snowy and cold as we go forward. So buddy, what are we waiting for? Let's get right into it. All right, here's our storm, son. We've got a major snowstorm cranking up here near Cedar Rapids. Eastern Iowa is getting some snow out of this. Man, Eastern Iowa is the winner of this winter. You guys are Snowtown, baby. But look here, right around Davenport, we've got extremely heavy snow showers falling. And of course, we do have those winter storm warnings in effect here. Uh, this is going to continue moving north and east. Chicago, you're going to end up getting some snow. And then back here in central Iowa, look here, we've got blizzard warnings warnings in effect. Northwest winds in excess of 45 miles an hour are expected here. So the snow along with the winds makes it a blizzard, son. A classic blizzard. A classic Iowa blizzard. And then south of the snow, of course, we've got rain showers from Peoria all the way down to St. Louis into Evansville, Indiana, Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is all going to continue moving off to the east. Nothing too uh, spectacular going on with these rain showers. The headline of this weather story is the snow. Speaking of snow, how much they got though? Already as of about 10 a.m. this morning, four to five inches of snow has fallen in Minnesota. Five inches here in Buffalo near Sioux Falls. They've got about four inches. Let's see how much more is going to fall by looking into the future on the weather models. We're going to start off by taking a look at the her model. She's a pretty good model at this time range. All right. We're going to put this simulated radar into motion. Here we are at 1, 2, 3 p.m. Snow showers are now working into Chicago and they're going to be heavy. They're also on the backside here going to reach as far south as St. Louis, but it will be brief. Look at this mixture of precipitation going on north of Indianapolis. A lot of northern Indiana is going to start off as a mix with some rain showers in there. But you guys are going to get a little bit of snow. It's snowing heavily though in southeastern Wisconsin near Milwaukee and Kenosha. You guys can expect a pretty decent thumping of snow from this. But watch, this thing is moving quickly as now we've got snow showers in Indianapolis moving into Ohio now. And now South Bend, Indiana is getting the heavy snow showers. And it's moving into Michigan here. So here we are at 6 p.m. This is what the radar should look like. And let's move it forward just a little bit more of the Heavy snow makes it as far south as near Dayton, Ohio, but that rain snow line does move north a little bit. And the heaviest of the snows are concentrated up here in Michigan and the upper peninsula of Michigan. And then as we play that on out, looks like the snow's going to try to hang around for northern and northeastern Ohio, but there will be a lot of mixing going on. I don't expect too much accumulation to happen here, but we've got some downpours in West Virginia. Those are going to turn into some heavy snow showers in the mountains, and those rain showers continue all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico. And then as we play this on out, look at here the snow tries to start in Pennsylvania and it will try to continue to move on into the Northeast. We'll look more at that here in a second. For now, let's take a look at those expected snowfall totals here in the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley region. Six inches or more is expected here near Davenport. Two or three inches is possible in Chicago. The winners here are the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and Northeastern Wisconsin with a broad swath of over six inches of snow expected. Nobody's getting buried in snow up here, but I mean, that's a, you know, that's nothing to balk at. Western Michigan can see three to six inches of snow. Grand Rapids here. I think if you get under that right little snow band that, that kind of amplifies as it moves off the lake, um, you could see more than six inches of snow easily. Now we do have these one to three inch totals peppered in here through central Illinois, central Indiana, northern Ohio. I think that you guys probably won't end up seeing very much snow on the ground when this is said and done. But yeah, that's how the storm's going to affect the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes. Let's see how it's going to affect the northeast. All right, let's take a look at the northeast. We have to switch over to the NAM model. Our high resolution rapid refresh model just couldn't see that far out. So here we are at 7 a.m. on Friday. We've got some moderate snow showers breaking out all across Pennsylvania from Pittsburgh all the way to Philadelphia. You'll start out as snow with a little bit of mixture. This won't be a very significant snowstorm for you guys, but upstate New York, you guys could see a little bit of snow too. Uh, Western Massachusetts, Northwestern Connecticut, Northern New Jersey, you guys could see some flurries, some snowflakes flying uh, from this storm, but I don't expect very much to come of it. Now some pretty sharp cold air is going to come in behind it, and then that's going to set the stage for our next storm uh, that we definitely have to talk about right now. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so now we're talking about this potentially major snowstorm coming to the East Coast on Sunday. Now, this is the one that showed up as a massive blockbuster storm on the Euro a couple days ago. Now, it's looking less likely that we are going to see some sort of historic blizzard out of this, but the chance is still there. The signal is still there for a pretty significant snowstorm for a lot of people on the East Coast. So, let's take a look at it. Remember, we're still a little ways out, so there's time for this to change, but here's our first storm going by. It's going through Michigan, northern 
Ohio into Pennsylvania, and then that gets out of here. And what it does is it sets the stage, okay, for an overrunning event. We've got cold air down all the way down into Georgia here, and we've got an elongated cold front where another little system is going to try to spark up on the tail of it. And whenever that happens, as long as cold air is in place, the northern radius of that precipitation shield is going to be snowfall. So check this out. Here's something interesting too. 1 a.m. Saturday, February 6th, it may be cold enough for some snow to try to be mixing in in central Georgia and central South Carolina. Still unsure about this, but the possibility is there with that 540 line all the way as far south as Huntsville, Alabama. And let's put this into motion. Here comes our next storm. As you can see, it looks really similar to what we were looking at on the Euro the other day with that massive storm, but it's weaker. And the cold air up here that's coming down is weaker. And this disturbance over here is weaker. So the ingredients are still there for, you know, something that's absolutely crazy, but everything is just a a little bit toned down as we push this forward. Here we are now, Sunday at 1 a.m. We've got heavy snow breaking out across Virginia, Eastern Tennessee, very Northwestern North Carolina and West Virginia. Also, another reason why this isn't bombing out completely and becoming this giant storm is because the injection of this secondary disturbance is a little bit delayed. We need this to be faster and we need it to phase right around here rather than up here. But here's our low pressure system off the coast of North Carolina, 1,003 millibars, looking like once again, heavy snow in Northern Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware, extremely heavy snow as we move into 7 a.m. on Sunday from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore, Northern Maryland, all the way into central New Jersey, Long Island. And we never get a true phase out of this system up here. So we're not seeing the full potential of what this storm could do. And it's also moving very quickly. Look here, here we are at 1 p.m. on Sunday and the storm is already, the main precipitation shield is already up here in Massachusetts and Connecticut and don't get me wrong this is still going to be a very significant you know if it pans out this way it's going to be very significant but it's not as crazy as it could be if we get this storm to come a little bit faster and phase with it a little bit sooner but here's that cold air coming down behind our little arctic blast also with this solution that's not as intense it's still going to get cold but not nearly as cold as what we were originally looking at and then there goes our storm if you want to look at snowfall totals for this here we've got up to two inches going all the way down into Alabama and northern Georgia here. The real snow starts though in northern and western North Carolina with over a foot of snow possible all the way in a small streak through Virginia into Washington DC, Baltimore to the upper Delmarva Peninsula, Delaware and into New Jersey. Let's switch to the Northeast view. And as you can see, the high totals extend all the way into New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. As you can see, a lot of these totals are around nine or 10 inches with a broader swath of six inches or more. And the reason these totals are an extremely high is because of how fast that storm moves through. Additionally, we never get phasing from that secondary storm. Uh, so it's not as strong as it could be. But here we have a signal of a very significant storm with the possibility of some phasing happening and a warm enough Atlantic Ocean to where if we do get that phasing happening. We're going to have some bombogenesis. It's going to bomb out, son. And everybody in this circle right here is going to be in Snowtown, baby. Or Snowtown, maybe. Now, there are a lot of moving parts with the storm. I think there's a huge potential here for us to see something more significant than what the NAM just showed. Doesn't mean that it's gonna happen, but we do need to explore the possibilities. I could spend over an hour talking about just that storm right there, analyzing different models, different data points, looking at analogs and stuff like that. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna have our first ever super in-depth live stream for members only. So if you are a member of the channel, make sure you're there tonight at 8 p.m. If you can't be there, don't worry, it'll be recorded in and you can watch it later, but if you're there live with a smaller audience watching, I'll be able to answer every single question that's asked. If you are not a member, make sure you click the link in, down in the description that says join to become a member of this channel and you will have exclusive access to all kinds of cool things, including uh, the member only super in depth live stream tonight. All right, let's zoom out a little bit further and look a little bit further into the future on the GFS. All right, let's put this into motion. This is the 12Z GFS. There goes our first storm and the GFS actually has that cold air coming down a little bit more intensely and bringing some backside snow showers to southern Ohio and eastern Kentucky, but it does move it out of here right around the same time frame. And here's our Sunday storm coming together. Now it looks a little bit more impressive on the GFS than it does the NAM, but we got to remember how well the NAM did with this storm that dropped 40 inches of snow in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. However, look at how the GFS handles this. We've got more cold air coming down. This disturbance is a lot stronger here, and we've got abundant moisture here in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's see how they come together. Hey, look 
here. We've got heavy snow in central Tennessee, northeastern Arkansas, Missouri, Kentucky. This comes together a little bit more nicely here in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. And there is some sort of delayed phasing that happens there. And because of that, it becomes a little bit of a stronger storm, but it's not the perfect ideal situation. But we've got heavy snow in eastern Kentucky, eastern Tennessee over here. Now this is a little bit further off the coast. So even the southern Delmarva Peninsula is seeing snow at 7 a.m. on Sunday. Let's put this further into motion. Look, that everybody stays all snow on the coast because of how far out to sea that is. But it is a little bit of a lighter snowstorm because of that. So if you watch this piece of energy, there's never really a full injection. There's never really any bombogenesis that happens. The snowstorm is there. The GFS sees it. Once again, this is a signal that has been showing up for five days now. So it's time to lock it in and really start paying attention to those minor shifts from run to run. If we can see this move a little bit quicker and become a little bit stronger, we're going to see a massive snowstorm on our hands, guys. But if it's a little bit slow, if it stays delayed, um, you know, it'll be a quick hitter. But even if it happens the way we're showing here on the GFS, hey, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia are going to be very happy. Now let's look further into the future. What else we got going on on the GFS? Little moderate snowmaker moves through on February 8th and 9th. And then we've got what looks like another storm forming here on the 9th of uh, February. Tuesday, we've got a mix of snow and rain and sleet in Arkansas, Missouri, and then that moves off to the east, but it kind of gets torn apart by our cross-polar flow here, and there's nothing to worry about too much there, but then another storm comes out of the Rockies, meets up with a ton of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this is all the way out at February 12th. Don't want to look at this too closely, but there's our massive cold air coming in behind it. Heavy snow in Kentucky here. Pretty significant ice storm for Tennessee, eastern Kentucky, all the way down into Mississippi, Arkansas, Texas. And then that moves off to the north and east, and that does become a pretty significant nor'easter February 13th. Okay, so we, we also we need to keep our eye on that. This was showing up the other day as a, a much more southern storm. It's moving to the north. Look at how much blocking is up here. Look at how much cold is up here. So it may be suppressed. This may be a, a, a suppressed southern storm in the end that affects people from Missouri all the way out into North Carolina. Carolina, but we do have to keep watching that. As of right now, it's showing a pretty significant uh, nor'easter for New England up here. And then here comes our cold air down behind it. And do we have anything else? There's a little system on the 16th, and that's pretty much it for right now. We're, we're still, I mean, this is very active. One, two, three, four, uh, five uh, significant snowstorm possibilities on the GFS. So that's cool. Let's look at those snowfall totals. All right, there's that first storm bringing decent totals to the mid-Atlantic here and down into the Ohio Valley and Appalachian region. And then that second significant one drops a ton of snow from Missouri into Kentucky, Southern Ohio, West Virginia, all the way up into the Northeast. Everybody's in Snowtown, baby, especially up here in the Northeast with up to 40 additional inches of snow possible in New Hampshire. Pretty sharp cutoff line here. This is where uh, the GFS thinks that cold air is really going to penetrate and wherever the cold air meets the warm air that's where these storms are really going to pop up i believe this has a chance of being further south however this is what the gfs shows right now speaking of temperatures son let's look at that polar vortex let's look at that arctic blast how cold's it gonna get bulls all right so initial model run showed this uh, cold plunge really coming down to the southeast a lot more intensely than it does here on the new gfs however it still comes down but it's kind of delayed look how it kind of meanders a little bit but it does eventually go all the way down into the south Southeast, and we get a really good cold plunge from this. Now, the cool thing, if you're a snow lover in this area, is that this boundary of colder air with warmer air is going to allow for storms to kind of jump up and then head off to the northeast. If you are a snow lover in this area right here, this is kind of, you know, the ideal setup for multiple storms to kind of run over and cause some major snowfall, and especially because of how long it hangs out there. A lot of times when we have an intense Arctic blast, you know, like a really strong uh, pole polar vortex that comes down all the way way down into the Gulf of Mexico and Mexico itself it suppresses our storm track so like storms moisture from the Gulf can't make it as far north and then storms try to come down here and nobody gets any snow so I believe that even though this cold air isn't nearly as intense as what the euro showed of the other day it's still very intense it's gonna be the coldest air of the season and it's gonna set the stage perfectly for big snowstorms as we go into the future all right guys that's all of the weather talk I have for you today I hope you enjoyed it and if you did make sure you slap a like on this video right now subscribe if you haven't already and turn notifications on once again remember i'm going live tonight at 8 p.m eastern for members only an exclusive live stream bill so if you've been thinking about becoming a member but you're like ah i don't know right now's the time to do it okay i appreciate you guys so much for being here the channel's growing like crazy we're gonna hit that 20k goal really soon and buddy i'm just over the moon about it thank you so much i'm gonna end this here but i will see you in the next one all right goodbye Woo!